I'm called Monica Sabino Madut. I'm from uh, the Republic of South Sudan, from Western Bahrain State. Yeah. Uh, I started uh, at a mission school known as John Paul II uh, School. Uh, it was a mission school and uh, don donated by uh, Combonian and Salesians. Uh, I, after I graduated from John Paul, then I, I got enrolled to Juba University. Uh, and there I did a community studies and, uh, and rural development, where I graduated in the year 2006. And uh, after that, I got my lovely son. <laughs> I call him uh, Gareng. I named him after our fallen hero. And uh, after that also, I, I work with the Minister of Finance at the Department of Planning and uh, Statistics. I work as an inspector for planning. Um, and before that also, I have been working with, uh, with uh, New River County has a uh, has a clerk grade 14 and uh, i work also with uh, a lot of ngos but has a volunteer and uh, i also in order to to expand my career and to expand my uh, my uh, um, my career i just also work together with the ministry of uh, of social welfare has office manager for minister's office. And uh, after that also I quit it and I was uh, released to go and serve my party, the SPLM. Uh, has a, a gender focal point with the SPLM Youth League. And later they also advised me to do my master's rather than just to stay and work and work. I must also add something to my knowledge. So I appreciate them also for this, uh, this offer. And that's why I'm here now. I'm released by the SPLM Youth League to do master's in uh, gender and development at Afad University for Women. South Sudan uh, separation and independence, there are a lot of causes, yeah. But I will also, I will only concentrate on three or two of them. The first of all is uh, uh, marginalization. Yeah. Southern Sudanese were marginalized for a very long time. Yeah. Since the independence of the Sudan in 1956, we struggled together as Sudanese for our, to achieve our own independence. But at the late hours then, we discovered that our brother, the northerners were dominating all everything in the Sudan. Yeah. We were exploited economically. For example, let me take the issue of, of petroleum. The petrol is there in southern Sudan. Can you just imagine <laughs> how long the pipelines that move from southern Sudan, from entire south Sudan, up to Port Sudan. It's exported there in Port Sudan. Very long journey. And when it's, it's also exported then, the revenue doesn't go directly also to South Sudanese. We are still being exploited. Yeah. South Sudanese were not given their right. Even the constitution of the Sudan was dominated by Islam and Arabic culture. So we, we, we South Sudanese, we discovered that we are not actually part of, of the Sudan since we are not represented in the constitution. And we are not also acknowledged in the, in the way that the revenue of the Sudan is distributed. For example, by then, then the money that goes to South Sudan was only chapter one for the salary. But development money do not go to South Sudan. They just end up here in the center. That's the first cause of the, end of, uh, of the separation of South Sudan. And the second one is also the mismanagement of diversities. As I have just mentioned in the constitution, Sudan is very diverse, yeah. And also people, the Sudanese people, especially the northern people who were dominating the power, they mis mismanage their diversities. Yeah. They, they just see other, other, other tribes as just uh, African tribes. They see them as pagans. They see them as people who, are, who don't understand. And they label them with a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, of, uh, of things that should not be labeled to human beings. Yeah. I, I really, I was overjoyed that I felt even sick 
<laughs> because uh, I was so happy for the independence of South Sudan. And hence, I, I used to say that it's, it was not just a matter of dream. Yeah, we have been working for it and we appreciate God. We thank God that we have achieved our independence. Yeah. Mm. And it's now high time that we need to develop our own country. Yeah. Because for a long, very long time, we have been left at the back. We don't have services, no, no health care, no education. Everything is zero, zero, zero. Yeah. So we are so glad that we by ourselves has in our own country, we will deliver our own people the services that they have been longing for all this time. Yeah. The challenge is that we'll face the new independent uh, nation. We have only one, one challenge, that the challenge of building a state is the only challenge that we have, because to, make, to build a state is not that so easy. Yeah, concerning the nation, then we have already constructed our own nation as Southern Sudanese. We have our identity is there. Everywhere we go, then everybody will know, every, anybody will just recognize this is a Southern Sudanese. We have our own identity, yeah. And in, in, regarding the, <coughs> the, uh, the nation building, then we have no problem. We have our identity, we have our culture, we have our ethnic group. What we need to do in them is just to uni unite them and let them have one voice for their uh, embetterment. But the only challenge is state building. How are we going to construct our new state? How are we going to manage all the problems within the state? For example, we have the challenge of the army. Yeah, We are supposed to have only one army, but now there are some other militias are also, also still, uh, still uh, operating in southern Sudan. This is one challenge. And the other challenge, which is a very slight one, is a gender uh, consent challenge. Yeah. But I'm so glad that in southern Sudan that there's a great respect yeah, for gender issues. Yeah. Even within the constitution, if there are some slight mistakes, then they are very limited. They are not that so vast. Yeah. For example, in the constitution of South Sudan, uh, there is no, there is no very, very broad line about about uh, about polygamy, yeah. And polygamy is uh, is a gender concern, yeah. And it's very common in South Sudan. But the constitution doesn't make very broad line and doesn't take measures to anybody who who, who is polygamous or anybody who who, who misbehave to to women in in form of polygamy. And also there is another challenge, the challenge of, uh, of institutionalization of gender, of, uh, of gender issues. Like in the curriculum of Southern Sudan, we don't have gender studies in the, in the curriculum. And we don't have peace studies in the car curriculum. We need also to inject these uh, this studies in our, our own curriculum. And also besides that also, we have the, <coughs> we have also to see to it that there is gender mainstreaming in the whole southern Sudan, yeah, and that's already achieved. But the only problem is that they are not that so active. There are gender focal points at any ministry, at any level, but they are not that so active, and they don't they don't have that uh, that uh, capacity to cooperate and coordinate their uh, their activities. That's another challenge. But I'm so grateful and thankful that in southern Sudan. Southern Sudan is a semi-gender sensitive uh, uh, state and nation because even the national anthem, you know, it says that the, our motherland, <laughs> but not our fatherland, that means it's a gender sensitive uh, state.